welcome to my channel. My name is Courtney with Southern Owls and today we are going to be making a deco mash wreath on a raised form. This is a gift for my niece so I'm super excited about this gorgeous wreath that we're going to be making today. So we are going to grab our 21 inch deco mash in black and we are going to start by adding this into our wreath form and giving that a good twist. I didn't realize my tag is still on, so let's cut that off because we definitely don't need that tag anymore. I'm also gonna grab a cable tie and secure that to the start of our mesh. <clears throat> we just wanna make sure that our mesh isn't gonna go anywhere. Just tie that on really nice and tight. Cut that off. And then we can cut off this extra. Just kind of clean it up a little bit. Now it's nice and secure, so it's not going to go anywhere. So I am using scrap deco mesh, so I might run out. Um, but we'll see how far we can get. So we are going to be doing 10 inch poofs. 10 inch poofs into every single twisty tie okay so what you're going to do is you're going to grab that deco mesh and slide your hand down to about 10 inches you're going to lay that right into those tinsel ties and give it a good twist you can uh, buy these raised wreath forms online um, i buy them from tons of different stores um, it's honestly just whoever has them on sale is who i buy them from same with deco mesh. All of my favorite stores are linked in my bio on social media, on all my social media platforms. I have a link tree um, where I've tagged a lot of my favorite stores. So just keep on going around. We're going to do the whole top first. Still measuring out that 10 inches with your deco mesh, letting your hand slide, and then putting that right down into those twisty ties. There's 18, 18 twisty ties on a wreath form. There's eight on top and then eight at the bottom. And we're gonna keep on going around. Okay, so now we have done all of the top. So we're just going to slide this mesh down to the bottom and we're going to start doing that same method on the bottom and just get that just to secure it in place okay and now we're going to go around towards the bottom I'm probably going to run out because I am using scrap mesh not scrap it's just extra you know what I mean <laughs> so still that 10 inch poof and this is 21 inch deco mesh 21 inch deco mesh I hope everyone's having a great day today I would love to hear um, where you're watching from first time watcher have you been to my channel before I love to hear from you. All right, we're just gonna keep on going. I don't think this is 10 inches, so we're just gonna cut this, okay? Cut that, and then we're gonna start with a, another roll. Is anyone else like this? I, <laughs> I have all these unused rolls, and I just throw them to the side, and I, I told myself, I said, you know, this is one of my goals, is to stop wasting mesh and throwing it to the side and use it all. So I'm really gonna try and do that. So what I just did is I unopened that tie that we just finished with and added the new mesh in. I'm also going to cable tie that down, okay? I'm gonna cable tie that down just because it's beginning and end, just to make sure that it doesn't slide out because that is not what we want to have. 
done. There we go. And just clip that off. No one's gonna see it. Okay. And then we are going to continue our 10 inch poof journey. So just keep on going around, measuring out that 10 inches. Also, when you do your poofs, you want to make sure that these edges on your mesh are folded down. That's what's going to really help your poof poof, okay? You want those edges of your mesh to always face down. And that is how you make a really good poof. It takes a few times to really understand the method but I am sure you will get it down. Okay, so we have just a few more left. Just keep on, keep on keeping on. Keep, oh, I'm tangled up in that tie. Let me get that tie out of the way, there we go. And then we will go around and fluff out our poofs. We got one more left, which is perfect. Look at me using up my scraps. <laughs> Look at me using up my scrap mesh. Okay, twisting that in, and we're gonna cut off the end. Okay. Throw that on the floor, grab another cable tie, because we're at the end of our mesh and just secure that to the bracket of your wreath for. Okay. Show that mesh who is boss. Get it nice and tight. I always use my needle noses just to make sure that cable tie is really good and secured in there. Um, these I got from Home Depot and they are such a good investment. They really weren't even that, they were less than 20, okay? So now I'm just kind of poofing these out. Really kind of stretching, right? You're just stretching out that poof, making sure it looks good. I'm pointing my twisty ties to the sky. <laughs> Did I just rhyme? <laughs> Oh man. Okay. Twisty ties to the sky. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Okay. So we're going to keep on fluffing all the way around. Making sure our poofs are poofing and looking good. Okay. So here you have it. Okay finished poofs on a raised wreath form. Okay, we're not done. I'm gonna set it down now. And now we are gonna grab our 10 inch deco mesh and yes, in black, I know. I want a black base though. I want a black base. My niece is a Slytherin. So all the other things are gonna be Slytherin, okay? So I just want a nice black base. So this beautiful sign will pop and um, the ribbon will stand out. Okay, so now we're gonna cut this whole roll. Oh, you know what, I need to plug in my glue pot. We're gonna cut this whole, this whole roll of deco mesh. This is 10 inch. <clears throat> 10 inch deco mesh. I'll be right back. Okay, sorry, I had to go get my drink cup. My drink cup was away from me. Okay, we are gonna cut this whole roll of 10 inch deco mesh at 20 inches. <clears throat> and the cool thing is if you cut this whole roll at 20 inches, it gives you exactly 18 pieces. And that is how many twisty ties are on your raised wreath form. So that works out really well. Guys, I need, woo, 
I think I'm going to cut through this mat soon. I need a new mat. I already, I flipped it, right? So if y'all been watching me for a while, y'all know I flipped the mat to get more life out of it. But I think I'm going to have to go shopping in January and get me a new mat. A new shiny, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself with a new shiny mat. <laughs> So today I am using a rotary cutter. If you do not have one of these, that's okay. You can just use scissors. Um, I just recommend your scissors being very sharp scissors because that is going to help with your deco mesh not fraying. Just a little tip. That is a question I get a lot in my lives is how do you keep deco mesh from fraying? Well, it is, it's not foolproof, but there are ways. Okay, see, just that little bit left. Okay. There are ways to help your deco mesh not fraying and having a nice sharp scissor or rotary blade um, are two things that can help that. Also buying quality mesh, really good thick mesh is also going to help with your deco mesh not fraying. So we're gonna be doing ruffles, okay? We're gonna be doing ruffles, and we're gonna put that in every single twisty tie, okay? Every single one. I'm just gonna ruffle that right in. So I always like to flip my mesh so it goes in on the table. I do that nice little flick of the wrist, okay? I tuck it about an inch or two find the middle, give it a pinch, and then I walk my fingers to the other side. So I like to keep my mesh under when I put it in because I think it helps with the fraying. Because if you put it in this side, this is gonna get caught on stuff, okay? So I always like to put it this way. It is the great debate, I feel like, in the wreathing committee, community, not committee, if you put it up or down. I do it down. I do it down because I think it, it helps with the fraying process. That's my story and I'm sticking to it, okay? So this is just gonna help fill in the gaps of your wreath. It's gonna help your wreath look more full and um, it's gonna help hide your wreath form because that's the whole point of adding all this fun stuff is we don't want anyone seeing the wires, the mechanisms, right, that make this wreath a wreath. So we're just gonna keep on going with these ruffles and tying them right in. So once again, flip it about an inch or two under, find that middle, walk your fingers to the other side, pinch it, twist it. Pinch and twist. Oh my gosh, that sounds like crawfish season. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so just keep on going. So there's 18 twisty ties, so you're going to do this 18 times. Let me get that out of the way. Just flip it. Under about an inch or two, find the middle, walk your fingers to the other side, make sure that is tucked under as well. And then put that right in those twisty ties, okay? Now we're going to do that to the bottom. See how much more full that already looks? It's looking fantastic. So we're going to keep on going. I just realized my I turned, I plugged in my glue pot, but I didn't hit the button. I did not hit the button. That's okay. It is now on. We have plenty of time until we need that glue pot. Whoop. Okay. Same thing to the bottom. We're just going to ruffle these in. Flip under, pinch the middle, walk your fingers to the other side, stuff it right into one of the twisty ties. And there we go. There we go. Okay. Let's 
so excited about this wreath for my niece. She has no idea that I'm making this for her for Christmas. Um, and so that is how I know. Do not come after me in the comments about copywritten stuff. I understand what I'm doing is copywritten, and I'm not selling it. It is a gift. And I will not remake this to sell. I won't do it. So do not, do not message me and ask me for one because I will not make it. It is not worth my business to do copywritten things and sell them. I, this year, I really do feel like they are really cracking down on copywritten stuff. So just <clears throat> make yourself aware if you are a crafter, what is copywritten and what isn't. A good rule of thumb is if it's a movie, a cartoon, if it's on TV, most likely it is copywritten. And all you have to do is a quick Google search and it will let you know. It will let you know if what you are using is copywritten or not. Okay. Tying this all in. I had to educate myself. Um, I didn't know about all of the copywritten things and I'm still learning. I am still learning. Um, a big thing this year was those little Debbie Christmas trees. That is copywritten. Yeah, that is copywritten. I learned too uh, this year that the conversational hearts, the Valentine's Day hearts that you see all over this wreath making community, um, also copywritten, my friends. So just, just make sure you're educating yourself because I would hate for your Etsy shop or Shopify or whatever platform you sell on um, shut you down. I would hate that for you. Okay, we have one more, one more ruffle. Okay. Ooh, so pretty, so thick. I love her. I love her, I love her, I love her. So now what I like to do, is I like to put the sign in next. That's the next step for me. So we are gonna put the sign in. I always like to make sure my twisty ties are like ready to roll too. Okay, so here is our beautiful castle. If you know, you know. <laughs> so what I do now is I use this jewelry punch to punch holes into my metal signs. I do. I used to use the um, tabs. <clears throat> I don't know what they're called. What are they called? Cable tie mounts. Uh, but my good friends uh, did, they tested, they tested it out in this blistering sun. And, um, I don't know if I should do black or tan. I think tan because it kind of matches like, yeah. Um, they tested it in full sun with the super glue, with all the things. And it, it fell, it fell off. The sign fell off. So, um, I now punch holes in my signs, which I hate because these signs are so gorgeous, but here we are, here we are punching holes. So I'm just tying in four uh, pipe cleaners. I punched four holes. You can get that jewelry punch on Amazon. It's less than 10, okay? It was less than 10. So it's not too much of an investment. And honestly, it's gonna save you money because the cable tie mounts are way more than $10. And you can use the jewelry punch indefinitely. <clears throat> so it will actually save you money instead of using the cable tie mounts. Okay, so now we have our four pipe cleaners attached to our sign. 
sorry, ring light. Now we're going to add this right in. And you're going to want to make sure that you're going through your mesh and onto the wires. So I like to pull through all of this first and then I secure it because I really want to make sure that my sign is uh, where it should be and uh, make sure that it is in the middle. Oh my gosh, look at that sign popping off of this black mesh. I'm so excited. Okay. So now I'm going to just wrap this around the bar. Um, there we go. The wire form, not the bar, the wire form, okay? Just wrap it around a few times. And we're gonna do that with all four, okay? Let's just hold that and let's flip it. It's gonna be easier. And then y'all can kind of see a little bit. Okay, take that and just wrap it around the bar. So that sign isn't going to go anywhere. I like to kind of go back and forth from left to right when I'm twisting. Okay. All right, and we'll clean that up when we're all done, okay? So here is what we are working with. So pretty. I'm so sorry for my ring light and the windows. <laughs> okay, so look how cute this little guy is that I found. So we're going to put him on. Once again, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. Okay, so we're definitely gonna, ooh, you know what? I did not get my U pins. All right, so now we are going to um, do our ribbon tails. And like I mentioned before, uh, my niece is a Slytherin. So we are going to just to be using um, green and gray ribbon to mimic Slytherin. And I am going to grab my ribbon tail board and start going to town. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. I was like, four on top, five on the bottom. Oh my goodness. Okay, so there we go. Just the perfect amount. I love when that happens. So this is two and a half inch ribbon. And we are doing nine um, tails of each color because we have 18 ties and we're going to do every other color. So we're going to do green. Okay. So two and a half inch green. And then on top, we are going to do a one and a half inch gray. Eight, nine. So we're doing nine of every single one. We don't have ribbon tail boards, um, don't worry. You can use a piece of cardboard. 
that's what I used to do. Um, I used a piece of cardboard that I cut at 12 inches and one at 13 inches because those are my two most common um, ribbon tail measurements that I use. And I would just wrap that ribbon around the cardboard. So if you're new to wreath making, don't think you have to go and buy everything, okay? So just use what you have. And once you start making a little money with your uh, business, then, then go and buy some fun things for you. Reward yourself, okay? All right, so now we're going to grab this two and a half inch gray. It is a little bit of a plaid, but I think it will look nice and kind of lighten things up a little bit. Five, six, seven. Oh, I twisted it the wrong way. <laughs> seven, eight, nine. Okay. And we're dovetailing. I don't think I talked about that. So all you're going to do is you're going to fold that ribbon in half and cut up to make that V. And if you're new to wreath making, do not do a big bundle, okay? Don't do a big bundle. Just do a few at a time. Just do a few ribbons in your hand at a time, okay? Work up to cutting multiple ribbon at once. And then I thought this would be so cute to use. It's that lace edge. Kind of make it a little fancy. We're gonna do nine of these. I thought I cut it. No worries. A little piece that wasn't cut. Okay. Same thing. We're going to dovetail all of these. Make sure they're all lined up really nice. And do a V. Fold that ribbon in half and cut up. That's the one thing too, if you are cutting a big bundle of ribbon, you want to make sure everything's really lined up because you want all the V's to look good. Has anyone ever used this laced edge ribbon? It's so cute. So, so cute. Okay, so now we are going to start adding all of these ribbon tails onto our base. We're gonna do every other as we go. So you're just gonna get a two and a half inch and the one and a half inch and lay them on top of each other. Find the middle, pinch, and then throw that right in there okay you can spread these out you can leave them together whatever your little heart desires okay and we're just going to keep on going so now we're going to do the gray on the bottom and the green on top and we're just going to keep on going around I think I might just keep them on top. 
of each other. I think I like that better. Okay. And now we're going to pick up the other color scheme. Same thing. Just lay them on top of each other. Find the middle. And lay them into those twisty ties. Another reason why you like to use a good wire ribbon too is so you can manipulate that wire and make sure that your ribbon is facing the way you want it to face. Get those tails going and cut on my wire. Let me do that. <laughs> And just never know what's going to happen over here. All right, and we're just going to keep on going. Every other. And you don't have to use this pattern of ribbon. I'm using it because she's a Slytherin. So I wanted to do all Slytherin colors because I thought it would be super cute. So if you're a Gryffindor, you can use Gryffindor colors, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, or you can just do what would be really pretty is just gold and black. That would be really pretty with this sign. So you, there are a lot of different things that you could do. A lot of different ways that you could make this wreath. Okay, so now we have all eight finished on top. So now we are going to move on to the bottom. Oh, that's so fun. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the bottom and we're gonna do that same thing. Just the same ribbon stacked on top of each other, find that middle and then just throw it right into those twisty ties. Doing every other do on every other. And we're just going to keep on going. Let me know if you are a Harry Potter fan. What house are you in? What is your house? I took the test and I'm a Hufflepuff. There's not very many of us out there. So I would love to know if you have taken the house test and what, what you are. I'm just gonna keep on keeping on. I also have one little element I want to apply to this as well, which is gonna make this super, super cute. And that could be fun too. You could you could put the Deathly Hollow symbol on here. You could do Harry's glasses. There's a lot of cute little elements that you could add to this wreath to make it your own. But be sure that if you are making any sort of copywritten thing, that you do not sell it because you do not want to get in trouble. You do not want to get a huge fine for selling copyrighted stuff, okay, friends? Oh, this is so fun. <clears throat> and no one tell my niece that this is her Christmas present, okay? So you'll have to keep a secret for two weeks. Can you do that? Is it even two weeks? It's like a week and a half. A week and a half. So no one tell her. <laughs> okay. That is so fun. Sorry, my ring light. So fun. So Slytherin. Love that. Okay, so now I'm going to go around and I'm, I'm going to cut all these twisty ties off. Okay. And you can keep them on. Or you can cut them off. It's your wreath. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to choose for this wreath. I don't want them. 
So we are just going to cut them off and fold them down. Make sure that you have really good nippers for this because your little hand is going to hurt because these little twisty ties, they are, they are pretty strong. They are pretty thick twisty ties. Some of my reads, I do keep the twisty ties on because I think it brings like another elevated element into the read, but I don't want it for this read. So we are going to cut all these little fun guys off. Also, this is a pencil, a pencil tie work form if you're new in the reading community, just so you know when you're searching for it at an online store. This is a pencil tie. They also come in a thicker ties, which I believe are called tinsel. I believe those are called tinsels. So those are a little bit of a thicker tie, which are also fun to work with. Now, normally when I'm working with a thicker tie, I definitely leave it on because I think it just jazzes it up a little bit. Okay, these are kind of short, so we're just gonna fold these in. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Oh, that one's kind of long. Let me cut that. And I'm just tucking them in, tucking them and hiding and fluffing out that ribbon. Does anyone else go to stores and like fluff bows? Like they're not even yours and you're just like, oh, that bow needs to be fluffed. Let me give it a good, because that's where I'm at in my life, is I just go around and fluff other people's stuff. <laughs> other people's bows. Okay. Cut those off. Okay. There we go. That's nice. That's nice. I like that. Okay, so I did get this little owl, because I love him. So I am gonna add this in just down here at the corner because I think he's adorable. I'm just gonna glue him in and cable tie him. I did grab some black ones. Not cable tie, pipe cleans. Pipe cleaners. Maybe I should do brown. Ugh, decisions. Okay, we'll just do black. I got him. So I'm gonna tie this around, actually just his little back leg. And then I'm going to glue him, glue him down as well. Put a little dab of glue right there on his little leg with the cable tie too, so that doesn't go anywhere. I have a glue pot over here you can't see off camera, but I'm just going to take my little stick and dab a little glue right on his leg in the pipe cleaner and now I'm gonna add some glue back here um, and then we are gonna add him just a good little coat add him right into the bottom corner because who doesn't love a white owl And we're going to thread this pipe cleaner through all of that mesh. I always laugh and say this is the hardest part of wreath making is threading through your pipe cleaners through all the mesh. Okay. I'm going to make sure that that pipe cleaner is being actually attached to a bracket. and give it a couple little twists. Oh, he's so cute. Oh my goodness, I love him. I love him so much. Okay, here we go. Little owl down there at the bottom corner. Fix him up a little bit. Okay, there we go. He's so cute. 
Oh, I love him. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Okay, so I'm also going to grab this wire that I got from Home Depot. I'm going to buy it in a spool in a ring. And we are going to attach this to the outer ring of our wreath. Okay, and this is how you're going to hang it on your door. If you don't have wire, no worries. You can just use um, ribbon um, or jute, whatever you have on hand, okay? And so that is how we're gonna hang it. So now all of these little uh, pipe cleaners that we had for our sign, you can just take your nippers and clean up that back. <laughs> you like how I'm just throwing it? And then, with our little owl, we're gonna clip off that extra. So our back is all nice and clean because we wanna make sure that we're not scratching anyone's door. Oh, I think this turned out really cute. Okay, and that's the back. Let me know um, what you thought about it in the comments. Let me know what you want to see. Let me know what you want. Let me know in the comments. Wow, words are hard. Let me know in the comments what you would like for me to make next. Thank you for being here. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I greatly appreciate y'all being here. Follow me on Facebook and TikTok as well where I go where I go live. Um, and I will see y'all soon. I hope you'll have a great rest of your day. Bye, everyone.